Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Effective and Ineffective Leaders. This is Lecture B, Ineffective Leaders. The objectives for this unit, Effective and Ineffective Leaders, are to describe the common traits of effective leaders, describe skills needed in order for HIT leaders to be effective, Describe the common traits of ineffective leaders. Distinguish between demotivating and motivating leaders. Discuss ineffective leadership's role on stress in the work environment. Sometimes one of the best ways to learn about what constitutes good leadership is to learn how not to lead. This is never more evident than the well-meaning but inept character Michael Scott from the NBC television show, The Office. In this show, Michael Scott leads a branch division of Dunder Mifflin, a paper company. This show falls into the genre of cringe television. Viewers cringe at every misstep Michael Scott makes. He has interesting ideas, but absolutely no plan to execute these ideas, so he tends to act using his gut feelings only. While it's a show that makes us laugh, it's sadly inevitable that some of us have worked for Michael Scott types, and it's been painful. In this lecture, we're going to take a close look at some traits of ineffective leaders. We're also going to look at the habits that ineffective leaders tend to have. Then we will learn how stress can influence leaders. We will finish with some observations about what makes good leaders good. One of the worst things about being led by a bad leader is that it usually causes company morale to deflate. Everyone seems to understand the things that the leader is doing wrong. So how can the leader not see that his policies and ideas are wrong? Perhaps the leader lacks experience, or maybe he is simply acting from blind ambition. Either way, his behavior is demotivating. Consequently, Staff reporting to the leader are not motivated to move forward, as individuals or as a team, because their situation seems hopeless. One of the characteristics of an ineffective leader is sticking strictly to the books and playing entirely by the rules. There are certain situations when this policy is effective. For example, leaders of engineering projects should always take this approach, because one wrong placement of a part could have a devastating effect on the end product. However, in healthcare IT project management, we are doing something we call managing in the agile world. This means that policy should certainly be considered, but we need to recognize that there won't be a policy or procedure that can be applied without exception to every single decision. Another characteristic of an ineffective leader is hyper-supervision. This type of supervision means the leader does very little work and watches his or her employees like a hawk. This method will eventually lead to employees feeling like hostages or prisoners rather than a team working toward a goal. Everyone on a team, including the leader, should be working toward the goal. In another lecture, we talked about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, that is, doing something for the internal reward and feeling of accomplishment, or doing something for an external reward instead. Let's face it, sometimes the work we have to do is mundane. Being supervised by an incompetent leader while trying to achieve our goals adds insult to injury. An ineffective leader does not bother to explain that while the work may seem boring and tedious, it's leading to a better product or outcome. And finally, weak leaders tend to not develop good relationships with their employees. If you have a poor relationship with your leader, it probably has everything to do with a non-motivating environment. If you are only receiving orders and have no real relationship to this person, what reason do you have to follow or perform beyond expectations? 
An effective leader makes the effort to have some sort of relationship with team members, no matter what their status is within the team or project. This can be through personal contact, attending team meetings, or through frequent and relevant communications. Whatever the medium, effective leaders nurture relationships with their team members. Now let's move to the right-hand column, qualities which serve to motivate employees. A motivating boss or leader will focus on an achievement culture. What we mean by that is that people work as a team toward a common goal. But that kind of work ethic doesn't just happen. Achievement cultures tend to be highly adaptive, but they must have good leaders who inspire the team to work toward the common goal. Many studies on motivation show that most employees do not work harder for monetary incentives. They're more prone to be motivated by meaningful work and recognition of their accomplishments. Increasing someone's responsibility to help achieve the goals of a company, when this is done in the right way, can be a positive challenge. It recognizes someone's past work and typically makes them more prone to loyalty and advancement within the company instead of jumping ship. Now, Let's look at the 10 Habits of Incompetent Managers, a list from a 2007 article by Margaret Heffernan. The first habit is bias against action. This is sometimes referred to as paralysis by analysis. Effective leaders, even though they never have all the answers, have a consistent bias toward action instead of inaction. As Teddy Roosevelt once said, Success belongs to the man who is in the arena. An idea might not be completely and fully formed, but at least it's an idea and is typically worth acting upon. Secrecy is number two on this list. The idea here is that if you treat employees like children, they will behave that way. Within reason, it's usually better to err on the side of sharing more information rather than less, as is sometimes done for the sake of sparing our co-workers. No one likes to be kept in the dark. The other problem with secrecy by a boss or leader is it breeds mistrust. What is she hiding? Is he afraid that we'll challenge him? Secrets make companies political, anxious, and full of distrust. In the healthcare IT industry, Gaining buy-in is important for survival, and this means being as transparent as possible. Whether it's news about being over budget or a delay in a go-live because of unforeseen circumstances, this information needs to be shared with colleagues as diplomatically as possible and as soon as possible. The third habit is oversensitivity. Some managers are too easy on low performers, and this hurts the whole team. If you're not dealing with employee issues head-on, you're simply allowing them to continue to fester. You are promoting incompetence. Heffernan interestingly notes that secrecy and oversensitivity almost always travel together. They are a bias against honesty. Love of procedure comes next. Love of procedure is rarely characteristic of a successful organization. Case in point, remember the movie Apollo 13? That mission was called a successful failure. The rocket did not reach the moon because of a mechanical failure three years prior to the launch. The ground crew of the mission had to go against nearly every engineering procedure that had been used to build the rocket. What was remarkable was the plan worked. Apollo 13 and the three astronauts aboard the ship entered safely back into the Earth's atmosphere. There is room for standardization and procedure, but clinging to a meaningless procedure just because it's there is a weak strategy adopted by ineffective leaders. Number five on the list of habits of incompetent managers is preference for weak candidates. Here is a quote from the article which illustrates this point. We interviewed three job candidates for a new position. 
One was clearly too junior. The other rubbed everyone up the wrong way. And the third stood head and shoulders above the rest. Who did our manager want to hire? The junior. She felt threatened by the super-competent manager and hadn't the confidence to know that you must always hire people smarter than yourself. Some of the highest achieving CIOs in the country say, without hesitation, that their strategy to move the organization forward is to hire people who are smarter than they are, but who share the company's vision and have a skill set to help guide it there. A manager who focuses on small tasks is often ineffective. For example, a beautifully crafted PowerPoint presentation does not always equal the ability to carry out the message contained in the actual presentation. Ineffective leaders may only be good at saying the right things, but cannot actually execute much at all. Likewise, having good organizational skills does not mean that one can manage or lead a group of people. Ineffective leaders are allergic to deadlines. Throughout this component, we have urged listeners to celebrate milestones, no matter how small or how large. But if a leader never meets deadlines, there will not be a lot of celebrating. Ineffective leaders, for whatever reason, be it perfectionism or pure laziness, do not value deadlines. Number eight on this list is the inability to hire former employees. Good managers and leaders usually have an arsenal of colleagues and past clients that they can use as a reference. And likewise, they typically know many skilled individuals who are eager to work for them. This is a malleable industry, and if your leader or manager cannot find any past workers to recruit or supplement a job with, you should probably be worried. What does it mean if a leader is addicted to consultants? On the one hand, consultants can fill a need for an organization, especially one that is in crisis. One might worry, however, when a leader relies on consultants to figure out organizational problems that he or she may have caused in the first place. This leaves the organization with less money and no more strategic problem-solving abilities than when the consultant first walked through the door. One thing is for sure, that the consultant has gained valuable information about a particular problem, and once the consultant figures out how it can be solved, he can sell that expertise at another client site. Finally, we come to the tenth habit of incompetent managers, maintaining long hours. Everyone knows that deadlines must be repetitively met, and that sometimes deadlines require the team going above and beyond their normal work effort or work day. But the leader who boasts of consistent late nights, early mornings, and no vacation time cannot manage anything. Make no mistake, getting to the finish line, whether that be producing the annual budget or managing a project through completion or successfully launching a new software product, will take many late nights. The difference is that a good leader finds balance. He or she understands that performance is directly related to rest, perspective, and a clear mind. Two famous researchers on social intelligence, Daniel Goleman and Richard Boyatzis, wrote an article about the chemistry of stress in the Harvard Business Review. The article discussed what happens to a team or group members when leaders handle stressful situations. Biologically, humans experience a surge of two hormones when they're under stress, adrenaline and cortisol. It just so happens that cortisol and adrenaline affect reasoning and cognition. How does that affect you? Well, in an implementation, things will inevitably get harried. As an implementation leader, you must know this. High cortisol levels and adrenaline can weaken the mind's critical abilities. Raising your voice, or in other ways flexing your muscle, tends to put the focus on you and the stress you may be creating, not on the work that really needs to get done. 
when a team is stepping on eggshells, trying not to make its leader angrier, important skills like memory, planning, and creativity tend to fly out the window. All leaders, ineffective and effective, encounter stressful situations. But the ineffective leader does nothing to understand his or her emotions, and biology takes over. Since this presentation has focused on what a bad or ineffective leader is, it seems appropriate to make sure we end on a positive note. The following slides contain some personal observations about competent leaders from experienced managers of healthcare IT implementations or projects. The first is that effective CIOs have to be focused on results. A hospital or physician practice needs to move forward, not remain stagnant. Measurable results are invaluable and speak volumes. A good leader has to share his or her vision and show progress toward achieving that vision. The second observation is that every single good leader, inside and outside the industry, surrounds himself with people who are smarter than he is. The consistency of this philosophy and their success as leaders is hard to deny. Remember, good leaders develop good followers who share their vision. Effective leaders have a very personable approach to the organizations they lead. They know their employees. They know the projects they're working on. But it's not always lighthearted work, and they have a very straightforward approach when dealing with issues that arise. They're able to strike a delicate balance between engaging the people on their team but negotiating with the people when the ability to meet a project goal is being jeopardized. An effective leader wants his followers to be successful as well and will take the necessary steps to make sure this happens. Finally, leaders who have won the respect of their peers tend to have a healthy sense of humor. They're usually self-deprecating and will admit that their success is largely due to the accomplishments of others, even though it's not. This is not to be confused with false modesty. Of course, sometimes humor in a less effective leader misses the mark. But a genuine leader will be able to use a sense of humor as an effective tool in managing people and the stress that inevitably comes with a difficult job. This concludes our unit on effective and ineffective leaders. In summary, we covered the common traits of effective and ineffective leaders. We identified the key differences between demotivating and motivating leaders and described the skills needed for a leader to be effective in HIT.